And my next guest has just told me that he's been doing this, looking at the papers for 10 years. So he's been in time after time to tell us about his reaction to them. What we do with the paper review is and just we don't slavishly just go through what each paper has got. It's actually the, the, the response of our reviewer to the stories that he or she reads uh, when they come into BBC Radio Northampton. And I'm really pleased to say that James McInerney is back in the studio with me. He is a man of words. Uh, he's an author. He's a poet. Uh, his book, uh, his first book out was In Between the Lines. You've been doing this a long time, James. Yes. I, I don't mean just looking at the papers, writing poetry. Up on social media, you quite often put, is it, is it new work or is it usually old work that it's you put It's a mix up? because I have so many people, um, new followers each day. So we've got, we've got a mix of new and old for all the new followers who haven't seen the work before. Mm. And um, it's just, yeah, because I'm constantly writing. So I haven't got time to write every single day. So I'm taking bits of old and then mixing new and yeah. <laughs> But you also spread a love of words with, with youngsters because mm. you, you've been working with the library service, getting youngsters yep. involved in poetry. Fresh minds, minds who perhaps aren't closed to poetry. I think as you get older, unless you've been lucky enough to, to engage with poetry, it's perhaps something that people think, oh, I can't get into poetry, it, it's not for me. And yet we've just been listening to lyrics, which are fact effectively a poem written to music well it was reintroduced back into schools um poetry um, and kids really love it um they're open-minded um and they really latched on to poetry and it was a, a real joy to teach children to know that the future of poetry is in safe hands mm. kind of thing going forward so it's been real good fun I, I i've had journalists i've had pr agents i've had all kinds of people reading the papers and then giving me their response you are a wordsmith mm -hmm. uh, do you find that the english language gets mangled by the print media i i, I don't wish to take a pot shot at them <laughs> because on broadcast we do the same thing too but what's your take on the quality of, of journalism we see well i think it's all sensational isn't it um words are there for shock and awe um um, it's, it's good writing um, but like I say they want front page news they want to catch your eye when you're reading um, and, and there's so many stories but I'd, it's slim pickings today I'm afraid <laughs> well I mean it's, it, it's interesting you say that because the newspapers need to sell copy because mm. that's what keeps people in jobs and so on you've got Donald Trump talking about false news yeah, and yeah. Un untruisms in the broadcast media as well as the print media um, you, you, that, that point of arresting people with a headline the sun has mm. made a name for itself yes. with, it, with its uh, headline writing that other newspapers try when you actually scratch beneath the surface the quality of of writing and the quality of journalism that we got it's not bad in this country yeah it's, it's, it? yeah it's good really good i mean i found quite a few st a few stories but um nothing that involved brexit well, it's, it's, it's always... praise be <laughs> every time i come in it's, it's the top story and um it wasn't actually the top story on which is shocking actually even though we've got 145 days to go oh don't don't remind us don't remind us it'll happen it, or, or it won't depending on what the politicians uh, and other characters get up to let's have a look at what you have seen this morning give me a couple um, of so stories following the health um you were talking about earlier on um oh, dr stanger yes yes, yes yes the new government initiative which is being launched tomorrow by matt hancock the health secretary Terry, is they want to basically saying that companies should offer perks which include free fruit bicycle loans and counseling to keep workers healthy and relieve pressure on the nhs what do you think about that i mean if it works um they're kind of modeling it on the rehabilitation of military of wo wounded soldiers who had an 85 percent return to work rate after injuries um so Obviously, they want to relieve the pressure off the NHS because of this time of year as well. It, with everything, it, it's very busy. So, I mean, you know, if you go to A and E or anything like that, it's packed, mm. isn't it? Mm. Um, so, if there's any way they can relieve pressure, I mean, bicycle loans is a is a. It's an interesting one, but I, I can see a kind of logic to it. If you're going to get somebody out on a bike, that their, their heart is pumping, their muscles are mm. working, they're oxygenating in their lungs and so on, a, a sense of well-being. But you're not going to get pinged off into the hedgerow by a car coming <laughs> the other way. And being being on a on a bike actually is a very positive way of of dealing with life. And I suppose there are positive benefits that aren't necessarily medical that yeah. come from that so if you can get that kind of a perk from a company perhaps I, it, it, I it makes like, for a happier workforce i like biking i bike as well so i like biking as well it's good it's good and i mean say if they're offering this it's good it's good for the employees do you bike on the road or off off road 
On the road. On the road. I've got a helmet and I've got high vis. Brave man. Yeah. Brave well, man. Well, the potholes. Are, I've lost so many bikes through to potholes mm. on the roads. We're going to be talking about that through the winter. I can see that yes. coming. So you're in favour of this kind of yeah. non-medical intervention for people's well-being? Yeah. I mean, if it helps people, people's well-being and keeps people in work, and you know, I think it's a good thing. Okay. And this is going to be announced by the government tomorrow. Tomorrow by Matt Hancock, the health secretary. All right. We'll keep an eye on that one. Give me another one, James. Um, the main news, which I actually is going on the firework theme. Um, yesterday at Woking Park in Surrey, um, a slide collapsed, an inflatable slide, um, and about eight children were seriously hurt. Mm. Um, mm. Onlookers, it was a 9,000 crowd were evacuated. Um, and I think it was a charity event as well. Um, but there's the, an eyewitness said that there was 40 children on a flimsy slide. This is one of these inflatable things. Yeah. The, the pictures in the paper. We, we have been reporting this in in our own news this morning. Mercifully, yeah. what was thought to be serious, uh, serious injuries don't appear now to be quite as serious as first thought. But at the same time, you go to an event like that, it's it's a parent's worst nightmare, yeah. isn't it? I mean, it was about thirty foot up mm. um, the slide, so mm. some of them it did just because kind of state that some fell onto concrete as well, and and they were aged between six and ten. Yeah, it makes you think, doesn't it? And, mm. and there's, there's been reporting of a, of a parent who said he wouldn't let his uh, little girl go onto the slide because there were 20 children on it already. Yeah. They're not bouncy castles, no. these slides. So a bit, bit of a kind of a horrible event there for, especially if you took your children along to see that. And if just whilst we're talking about bonfire night, it was ROSPA this, this uh, month, the Royal Society for the Prevention of Accidents. It said, as a result of su- a survey that it did, that two-thirds of parents didn't know that children under the age of five shouldn't be given sparklers to play with. I'm, I'm wow. amazed by that. Considering, yeah, social media and everything else available yeah. now to promote those kind of things. It's common sense as much as anything else, but people saying, no, I didn't know. I didn't, I didn't realise that was the case. I am amazed by that. Please, please be careful. Well, we're actually attending the firework. There's a race course that have got one tonight, haven't they? Big one, yeah. I think the the whole event starts this afternoon and then the fireworks go up around about 7.30 yeah, tonight. Yeah, so we're going to go and see that as well. And they're, they're quite well organised. They're fenced off and everything, so, you know, they're, they're quite good. So, But just be careful. Yes. Just be careful. OK, another one, James. Uh, we could, right, sport, Leicester City. Ah. Obviously, yeah, yes. Yes. Terrible thing. Um, a road trip failure happened and um, the helicopter that the club manager was in basically crashed outside the ground mm. and you know it was a fireball really Vichai Shriwat Hanaprava we've got used to uttering that name the mm. owner of, of Leicester City Football, yeah. Club, football Club uh, a billionaire his funeral is going on but did, I, I did read this didn't I a, a week long funeral yes, service yes a week um, the actual team who had a minute silence to the game yesterday are flying out to actually be at, at the funeral um, but yeah it's a whole week um, which is a bit, yeah. It's a strange story from the print point of view because mm. it, it's not often that sport makes it onto the front and the back pages yeah. of the same papers and, of course, well inside the papers as well. Fascinating to see that after the horrific attack, which, uh, attack, a, a, a horrific accident, uh, which claimed five lives, not mm. not just the owner of Leicester City Football Club, not much reaction in Thailand, uh, I, mm. I was I was reading from, from the journalist. But now it's really captured the spirit and the emotion and the mourning of an entire city, not just the, not just the club. I, I think at the game um, where they, they beat Cardiff one nil, um, both sides were standing up, you know, for the minute silence and respect and everything else. It was really nice. Um, so, um, obviously, a, a tragic event, but the outcome was that the fans really behind the whole club and you know the way fans as well. So, yeah. Is something like that the sort of material that would give you inspiration for writing poetry? I think so, because it's nice to see the human element in things when there's a tragedy, um, to see that uh, everyone comes together in, you know, in British, where we are, comes together and kind of like supports and backs things like this. They call it the beautiful game, don't they? Yes, it is. I mean, I was just I remember seeing it on the TV and it was terrible. So, I mean, it's nice that the outcome, that everyone kind of stands behind and supports everything. It's a good good outcome. It shows solidarity. It's, it's good that, that, that people pull together. Of course, those families absolutely bereft. And for the time being, uh, Leicester City Football Club itself so badly affected by that loss. They're going to feel that for years to mm. come, I'm sure. The city as well in mourning. Uh, good that people are coming together to, to, to support each other. I haven't yet read the report myself as to what the atmosphere in the ground was like for the Cardiff game with Leicester City Football Club that presumably is reported today you know, it, didn't, it didn't actually go into detail just obviously that there were that was happened and then they were flying out to Thailand so 
probably the report on the match will be on the back pages, and I'm, I'm, I'm sure that will be, make for some interesting reading. Let, let's have one more for, before we finish, James. Yeah, something you touched on before um, was the X Factor. Um, ah, yes. First time in its 15-year history, um, they cancelled the voting on Saturday night because they sounded like Daleks. That's, I mean, that is a strange thing when you've got something like that 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 so badly affects the competition. I've I've, I've been involved in competitions before when people were uh, singing. I mean, we'd call them talent shows these days, mm, but yeah. reality TV shows. Um, if something goes wrong for a particular performer, um, you get all kinds of people rushing to say, "Oh, it was deliberate," or uh, "I was I, I was uh, victimised by the by the producers of the TV program." No, sometimes things just go wrong. I mean, yeah, in this case, Danny Tetley and Anthony Russell, who were singing at the time. Um, they just they, they sounded like Daleks, basically. People mm. were rushing to Twitter mm. and saying, you can't do voting tonight, it's not fair on them, because if they go out, then it was because of, you know... So, obviously, X Factor have done the right thing and cancelled the voting but because of a, that. But from a producer's point of view, they've now got a nightmare because they've effectively got a wasted programme and they're scheduled all the way up to the finals Yeah. as we head towards the festive season. How are they going to deal with that one? That's, that's, that's going to be a big issue for them to, to, to sort out. Well, they're on a time limit because of releasing that winner single, isn't it, for that final week normally it comes out before Christmas so they can cash in on the Christmas thing. So Maybe Simon Cowell won't be getting his Christmas number one, which will make for an even more difficult week. Uh, he's had a pretty difficult one for different reasons as you might well have heard uh, so far this week the x factor seems to be bedeviled with problems james lovely to have you in thanks very much indeed thank you enjoy the week enjoy the bonfire night party I will do. stay safe thank you on fm online dab digital radio and freeview channel 734 this is bbc radio northampton always a pleasure to have james in to look at the papers on our behalf